Hey, what's up? All right, so tonight we're gonna to talk about uh, electricity and magnetism, how they kind of work together, the relationship they have, and uh, more specifically, how a soft iron core can dramatically, uh, you know, strengthen uh, your electromagnet, uh, even with even with the significantly less power going into it. Okay, we're gonna talk about the right hand rule first. This is why electromagnetism works in the first place. The right hand rule is we're gonna we're gonna Imagine that this is a wire. Now if you were to grab a wire with your right hand and the electricity is flowing in the direction that your thumb is pointing, there's going to be a magnetic field circling that wire in the direction of your fingers. So as you see here, I've got, I've got uh, arrows pointing in the direction of that magnetic field. Now when you take that wire and you coil it, several times, or well, not several times, but hundreds of times, um, you're gonna start to see this in, in the inside here. You can see the, the arrows are all pointing the same way. Now inside of this is gonna be your core. This is where the core of your, electro, of your electromagnet is. You can use an air core. Uh, a lot of people use a steel core. Basically anything uh, that a magnet will stick to can work as an electromagnet core. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more in a second about what makes an, a very effective electromagnet core. All right, so this is what makes electromagnetism work. We're going to here we have a really crappy looking core to our electromagnet. Now this is this could be iron or whatever, but um, now this has thousands of little molecules of let's say it's iron. Um, now each one of these molecules, if we blow this up to a bigger scale, we're going to see we've got our the center of the molecule, then we've got, that's, which is the nucleus, then we've got this electron cloud is what they call it. This, this uh, kind of circles um, the, the center here. Now this this is what this is almost like our solar system. I mean, you can think of it that way. It's very random, though, like in the way that it circles it. But um, just like the Earth, though, each one of these molecules has a pole. It's got a north and a south pole. Um, now, in in most metals, well, in yeah, almost all metals that haven't been magnetized, these poles are going to be just totally random in here. So there might be a north here, there might be a north here, there could be a north this way, and a south, south, south here, north here, maybe north over here. And so these aren't really facing the same way at all. Now when you add an electric, when you add a coil around here, and you've got that spinning magnetic field, it starts to align these and it makes a greater, like it makes a really strong either north pole here or south pole here and the opposite over here. So we'll say it's south there and north here for now. That starts to align all of these. Not all of them, but a, a, you know, a certain percentage depending on the strength of the electromagnet. Um, so these start to get aligned and the north poles are attracted to the strong south pole and the south poles are attracted to the strong north pole. Now, when that happens, when a lot of these align, then you have a magnet. So this, actually, this core would turn into a magnet. It's, it's uh, much more the core that turns into a magnet than it is the, the coiling. The coil is just what makes the core turn into a magnet. The other thing that you can do is we could add a, an electromagnet to any kind of metal. And let's say, the, uh, let's say we've got a coil here, and this is a north pole, and a coil here, making this a south pole. And that would do the same thing and we wouldn't have to have a coil around this core. Now let's say this is a steel core. In a regular steel core, not all of these uh, molecules are even free to change their, poli uh, ch to change their polarity. Um, and so let's say you have a, f let's say you have 40% of these molecules changing their polarity, you're really only getting 40% efficiency out of what could what this could be in its complete magnetized state. Now you've all heard of like the 
the uh, N48 and the N52 neodymium magnets, um, like the, the higher the number, the higher the percentage of these, uh, of these molecules that are facing the same direction. So, all right, next uh, little chart here. Okay, now we're gonna have, I'm gonna kind of draw all four of these out for you. Though it may not be necessary, it's, I'm sure it's not for a lot of you more experienced uh, tinkerers or any of you, you know, physicists out there. Um, but for you beginners, this, this could help a lot. Um, okay, first what you can do, you can increase the number of turns of coil around your electromagnet. So let's say we go from 20 turns to 40 turns, you will, if they are all touching uh, the electromagnet here, you will almost double the strength of the electromagnet. I'm sorry, if they're all touching the core. Um, the other thing that you can do, so you've got, you've got your, you know, kind of, you know, small current, smaller current, let's say uh, uh, five volts or whatever going through this wire. The other thing you can do, use the same number of coils double your current. Now when you double your current, oops, when you double your current, it's just the same as doubling uh, your number of coils. So if you do both, I mean you double your current, you double your coils, you almost quadruple uh, the power of your magnet. So that's times two, almost, and this is almost times two also, it's not quite. Um, the other thing that you can do is we can shrink down this, the uh, diameter of the magnet, which puts basically what this does is it puts these, these coils, when you get them stacked one on top of another, it puts the outer coil closer to the core. Now when the outer coil gets further away from the core, it doesn't affect it as much as these inner coils. Um, and there is a point, you know, if you get, you get into thousands of, of rotations and these, you know, these coils out here are basically not doing anything for you. So you can get ridiculous with it, you know, make sure you're uh, um, kind of experimenting to find out what's the strongest. So decreasing the, uh, the width of, the, of, of your core. Um, the last thing and the definitely the most, uh, the most uh, powerful way to do it is to use soft iron. Now what, what soft iron is, in this, in this drawing with, uh, with standard steel, there are only so many molecules that are even available to change their polarity that, uh, you know, and so you can't really, you can only squeeze so much efficiency out of it. Now in soft iron, a soft iron um, compound is part iron, part rubber. Don't ask me how they put those together, but it's uh, pretty amazing. And so, so now you've got these iron molecules that are all surrounded by, well, I'm just going to use X's for the, for the rubber molecules. So they're all surrounded by this. Basically what that, what that allows this to do is allows it to have more than 90% of its, um, of its molecules, its iron molecules polarized to uh, one direction or the other and you can you know and that depends on uh, which you know whether you have your positive lead wires here or negative lead wires here um, so basically you can get like over a 90 percent efficiency from this the other great thing about this is so that you know all these uh, molecules are facing different ways you charge it so many of them start to face the same way that this gets very strong, really a really good reaction. Um, the other thing is when you stop the charge, you cut off the charge and they go straight back to where they were. It completely demagnetizes itself. It's, uh, it's, it's just about the only compound uh, that, that people know of that does that, which is great for if you're doing projects where you need to change the polarity, you know, by switching the lead wires, change it north to south, north, south. So. Um, and I went on a crazy goose hunt for, uh, for soft iron. I'm I know a lot of you have been looking for it and it's like impossible to find. I actually found a place, uh, overseas and made a huge order. So I'm going to start making those available on eBay. If you want to just check out, um, my eBay name is J Z S D one four M E and, uh, that's eBay. So 
check it out at eBay if you want to get these. Like they're they're just about impossible to find, and I had to order a huge shipment of them. So if you'd like to start working working with this stuff, hit me up. All right. Well, good luck, guys.